pay well. Don't pay. <laughs> yes, sir. Don't do that. Do not do that. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm gonna drop it to you. I'll drop it to you. 17 too, bro. Yeah, boomerang. It was not You gotta put on Instagram boomerang. Here's a quick news break with yours truly. I'm the one and only. I go by the name of Mr. Telefero. How's everybody doing out there? Please make sure you take care of that bit of business of following your boy on Instagram. I go by the name of at it's Mr. Telefero. The goal to 10,000 followers by May 1st. Please help me achieve that goal. You know, Gucci Man is moving from being an artist to more of an executive again. I'm not saying he ever stopped, but because of legal situations, he had to put executive Gucci side on pause. When he was locked up in prison, he was still able to drop music and he dropped a lot of projects, but he was not necessarily able to be the executive and the label head that he wants to be running 1017 records to the point where he even advised artists like a young thug when he got locked up like, yo, I can't help you out right now. Go sign with someone else. I'm going to go put you with somebody who could do for you that I can't do for you right now. So that's why one of the reasons why we always respect Gucci, number one, is because he's always been a stand-up dude. Number two, he's always had an eye for talent. And he's on the search again for more talent to bring to what he's now calling the new 1017. Yes, that's Gucci Man's new label. He's calling it the new 1017. And he's launching that bad boy with two new young acts signed. According to Gucci Man, he's giving any new artist that he signs one million dollars up front and then another million dollars to create your <laughs> album or your project so i want to send a congratulations yes, to man. two of the newest acts two of the first acts on the new 1017 we got fujiano fujiano got that <laughs> that record that i like baby mama ain't shit. yeah yes, she won't let me see my son and he also signed Ola Rent. Salute to Ola Rent. Haven't heard a lot of music from him, but congratulations <laughs> to him nevertheless. Again, these two artists, yes, according to Gucci yes. Man, giving a million dollars straight up, and they will be gifted a million dollars to create their music to Atlanta Acts. Congratulations to the both of them. I look forward to hearing more music from them soon. Again, Gucci Man relaunching 1017 with some new talent, some new Georgia talent in the atmosphere. Y'all let me know if you've listened to Fujiana or Ola Rent. Do you like the music? And if you do have music, that you like please let my comment section know a specific track that you're rocking with so we can go check it out as a collective so gucci's legacy is not only submitted as an artist but i feel like with the amount of cosigns gucci's had in his lifetime i mean from future rich homie uh thug the migos Waka, obviously oj the juice man obviously you name it pretty much any artist that's come through the Atlanta ranks, Gucci has co-signed that artist over the years. So Gucci Man's legacy submitted for not only an artist, but a guy that knows talent. One guy, another Atlanta legend that does not have that type of co-sign uh, attached to his legacy is Young Jeezy. Again, a legend in his own outright for music. But I don't think people, when they bring up Young Jeezy, they look at Jeezy as a guy who's necessarily put a lot of artists on. Uh, Jeezy recently sat down with Charlemagne on his YouTube channel for an exclusive interview and they talked about just that. Charlemagne asked Jeezy straight up and down about the narrative that Jeezy can't put artists on. Here's Jeezy's response to that. One of the critiques was Jeezy have never put anybody on musically. I've tried to put people on but everybody was a part of my first project. They own. You know, drama. He might he, he might beg to differ, but that that gangster grills wasn't in the hood like that until Young was on that thing. Trap or Die I would, was I, I, would, I would agree. Right, but he probably say something different. But I know better because nobody else got their mixtape played in the club for five or six hours straight, word for word, with the DJ drops. He knows that. You know what I'm saying? I or even with the album, like people weren't a part of no projects where they were getting platinum plaques that, that far out. You know, just think about Cannon. That that go crazy beat was a beat that he gave Tip for mixtape. And when I heard it, I said, yo, I want that beat, a beat like that. He said, you can get that beat, because Tip only rapped on it for freestyle. Imagine me taking that beat, making it uh, tr uh, Trap Star, not, not, go, crazy, go crazy, and then putting Hove on it. That's putting somebody on. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't have no paperwork on these people, yeah. which I could have at that time. Why not? But I didn't do that, because I was trying to help. You know what I'm saying? So just think about drummer boy, Shorty Red, you know? Uh, 
the list goes on. Just Lee, just think about Just Lee. Nobody even knew who Just Lee was. When I did Jug and all them records, mm -hmm. I did it. I did that. You know what I'm saying? Boys in the Hood, I led that. You know what I'm saying? Like I led it. But they're not gonna give you the credit because they weren't signed, but that means I would have to personally gain from them. But that just should show you what type of person I am in my heart. If I'm not trying to bound these people in, I just want to make great music and history with them. Like, yeah. I didn't go in there like I need yours. I'm going to go make my own, but I want you to be a part of mine. You feel what I'm saying? So when you say you ain't put nobody on because you haven't signed somebody that's been successful, I mean, like, look at YG. YG's from Cali, L.A. He came, he came to Atlanta with me. We worked on his first project. It was very successful. I was in on that. The only people that was in that was successful from L.A. either were attached to Suge Knight or Dr. Dre. That's real. You know what I'm saying? You got a guy from the, the, the porch right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and he went all the way to Cali and, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and used his expertise to help this kid become the superstar that he was going to be anyway. But I just help his shit along, but they're not going to give me that, and that's fine. But that's a whole coast, bro. Yeah, I remember interviewing DJ Drama a couple years back. It's not like Drama Ooh. ever denies the impact like a Trapper Die or Gangster Grills has had on his legacy. Uh, let's check out this clip from my interview with Drama from a couple years ago. You know, for me, it's like sometimes I even take myself out of the equation and, and go back and listen. And, you know, the other day I was in the gym listening to Trapper Die and, and, you know, the intro came on and I still got chills. So, you know, that, that's mm -hmm. when you know, like, you know, it's something monumental. So, um, for me, it's, you know, all the, all the things that I've done, you know, it, it's, it's great because it's part of my career, but I stay focused because it's always about what I do tomorrow, not what I did yesterday. I do believe Jeezy is right when he says things like, yo, I was part of the reason, even if DJ Drummer won't admit it, I was part of the reason Gangsta Grills was able to go over in the hood so heavy, right? And, it, and if I was a big part of that and Drama was one of the leaders of the mixtape era, which co-signed and stamped a lot of uh, artists, definitely down south, even all over, well, then by default, Jeezy has had an impact on a lot of artists by just his impact alone. Look, maybe you can't tie one artist to Jeezy specifically that he's been able to see pop off and become just as big an act as him. But for sure, you can say this. Jeezy's literally his ability to make, I'm talking about some of the most trapped out records mainstream and make it in a way that's digestible for anyone in America to listen to, that helped a lot of artists get over the hump and make their music a little more conformative to radio at a time where we needed our music. I don't think we necessarily need it now on radio, but a, a few years ago, maybe five, 10 years ago, hip hop definitely needed a push from radio to get us over some hurdles, get us on some festivals, get us some commercials, some promos, some looks that we weren't able to get. And Jeezy was one of the leaders in making that music digestible for mainstream America, even though he was talking about some trapped out ish, but he was putting it in a way that anyone could listen to it. A lot of food references, a lot of different things like that. So I think Jeezy by default has co-signed a generation. Maybe you disagree with me. Let me know in the comment box below. What do you guys think about Young Jeezy's legacy and the fact that there's not necessarily one artist that you can say, that was his guy. There's no Waka Flockas or OJ the Juice Man's or the Migos tied to his legacy like there is a Gucci man. Talk to me in the comment box below. Make sure you're following your boy on Instagram. At it's Mr. Teller Farrell. The goal is 10,000 followers. Please help your boy achieve that goal. I'm out. I came from nothing, but I want everything God has for me. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I still represent the culture. Hey, got the kids that tuned in. Tuned in. Tuned in. We locked in right now, Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Telefair. Shout out to Mr. Telefair. Watching Mr. Telefair TV. Mr. Telefair TV.